one of my most uh, joyous remembrances of my family growing up is our trip to Disney World that we did back in 2011. And it was an amazing trip, and it was built up for years. We bought the books, we went out and and prepared for our trip for Disney World. We looked at all the different rides and already categorized our rides, where we're going to go, what we're going to do. And then all the preparation came to an end, and we actually flew out as a family together to go to Disney World. And what was so cool about the experience of us going there, for many different reasons, is that us going to Disney World was actually better than the buildup. And that doesn't always happen. Sometimes we get disappointed about things. And and what we're going to see here is we finish up our study in the book of Exodus. Now we're getting ready for this new worship that's going to happen with the people of Israel and God together. And they've been excited about it. We've had this buildup of building all the materials that are going to be needed for the worship of God in community. And yet, the buildup of all of this happening uh, culminates here in this chapter where we see something even greater happen as they begin to worship God in community. That's what we're going to look at as we complete our study in the book of Exodus. Hi, I'm Pastor Jeremy Bannister of Heights Christian Church, and we're going through the Bible in five years period of time. If it's always been a goal of yours to go through the Word of God, we invite you on this journey with us by clicking subscribe to our channel and the bell for notifications. You can receive a devotional much like this one, where we read just a little bit of the scripture together and pull one thing from it to help us be more like Jesus. Well, Everything has happened, and they they have all the materials. And what we're going to see as we finish out the book of Exodus is that we're now going to put all of this together, and we're going to see worship ensue. We're going to see the beginnings of worship as community ensue. And it's even better when they start doing it, and we'll see why as we read together. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, On the first day of the first month, you shall erect the tabernacle of the tent of meeting, and you shall put in it the ark of the testimony, and you shall screen the ark with the veil. And you shall bring in the table and arrange it, and you shall bring in the lampstand and set up its lamps, and you shall put the golden altar for incense before the ark of the testimony, and set up the screen for the door of the tabernacle. You shall set the altar of burnt offering before the door of the tabernacle of the tent of meeting, and place the basin between the tent of meeting and the altar, and put water in it. And you shall set up the court all around, and hang up the screen for the gate of the court. Then you shall take the anointing oil, and anoint the tabernacle and all that is in it, and consecrate it and all its furniture, so that it may become holy. You shall also anoint the the altar of burnt offering and all of its utensils and consecrate the altar so that the altar may become most holy. And you shall also anoint the basin and its stand and consecrate it. Then you shall bring Aaron and his sons to the entrance of the tent of meeting and shall wash them with water and put on Aaron the holy garments. And you shall anoint him and consecrate him that he may serve me as priest. You shall bring also his sons and put coats on them, and anoint them, as you anointed their father, that they may serve me as priests. And their anointing shall admit them to a perpetual priesthood throughout their generations. This Moses did, according to all that the Lord commanded him, so he did. In the first month, in the second year, on the first day of the month, the tabernacle was erected. Moses erected the tabernacle, he laid its bases, he set up its frames, and put in its poles, and raised up its pillars, and he spread the tent over the tabernacle, and put the covering of the tent over it, as the Lord had commanded Moses. He took the testimony and put it into the ark, and he put the poles on the ark, and set the mercy seat above on the ark. And he brought the ark into the tabernacle and set up the veil of the screen and screened the ark of the testimony as the Lord had commanded Moses. He put the table in the tent of meeting on the north side of the table, out of the north side of the tabernacle, outside the veil, and arranged the bread on it before the Lord as the Lord had commanded Moses. He put the lampstand in the tent of meeting opposite the table on the south side of the tabernacle and set up the lamps before the Lord as the Lord had commanded Moses. 
He put the golden altar in the tent of meeting before the veil and burned fragrant incense on it as the Lord had commanded Moses. He had put in place a screen for the door of the tabernacle, and he had set the altar of burnt offering at the entrance of the tabernacle of the tent of meeting and offered on it the burnt offering and the grain offering as the Lord had commanded Moses. He set the basin between the tent of meeting and the altar and put water in it for washing, with with which Moses and Aaron and his sons washed their hands and their feet. When they went into the tent of meeting, and when they approached the altar, they washed as the Lord commanded Moses. And he erected the court out around the tabernacle and the altar and set up the screen of the gate of the court. So Moses finished the work. Then the cloud covered the tent of meeting, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. And Moses was not able to enter the tent of meeting because the clouds settled on it and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Throughout all their journeys, whenever the cloud was taken up from over the tabernacle, the people of Israel would set out. But if the cloud was not taken up, then they did not set out until the day that it was taken up. For the cloud of the Lord was on the tabernacle by day, and fire was in it by night, in the sight of all the house of Israel throughout all their journeys. Wow, what amazing passage of scripture. Because now we see that the tabernacle is set up, and we're going to see the first offerings are given uh, that are there. As prescribed by God, Moses has done so. And when he does so, we see the glory of the Lord come into the tent of meeting, so much so that Moses couldn't even come into it. We see that God is truly with his people. And for the 40 years that they're going to be wandering, we see the cloud by day, the fire by night that is in the presence of the people of God. Oh my goodness, to think that they have uh, completed this prescribed worship that they're going to start doing and through it be led truly by the presence of God whenever and wherever they go. You know, reading Exodus chapter 40 reminds me of what happens in Exodus in Acts chapter 2 at the coming of the Holy Spirit where the fire isn't placed upon a building but is actually placed upon people. That tongues of fire are upon the people of God and now we have the intimate relationship of God not being with a place but rather being with the people of God that the glory of the Lord comes upon those who are following Christ, who have the testimony of Jesus. It's a glorious thing to think that we share in some way that ministry, to think that God being with us, the Spirit of God being with us in much the same way as he was with the people of Israel, as he led them along in the, de in the desert regions for 40 years. So he chooses to lead us along and lead us into all truth. My prayer is that you would be in step with the Spirit today and allow Him to lead you this day to do the things that God would have you do to glorify Him, that the glory of God can be seen through your life and through my life. God bless you. I hope that helps you this day and helps you get you a vision of what it means to really walk in the presence of God. I pray you do so today. Lord bless you, and we'll talk with you again tomorrow.